Yo, what's up? This is Jay Dennis, and we're back with another rant and reviewed. And today we are doing a band that I forgot how much I loved. We are doing Avenged Sevenfold. Yeah, that's right. We're doing their seven studio albums uh, from 2001 up until 2016. They are apparently teasing a eight studio album. Um, I don't know if it's coming out anytime soon, so that's why I'm not going to wait to do this one. You know, they've put out EPs, they put out new music in 2018, but we're just going to do their studio albums today. Um, I listened to this band quite a bit in high school, every year of high school, every year of high school, freshman year, I got into them. Um, you know, you've heard me say on other videos that bands like Kill Switch Engage or Trivium were like my first tastes of like metalcore or like screaming outside of like Linkin Park and you know Chester Bennington's Hybrid Theory, Meteora Screams. Um, but how could I forget? And I'm excluding like System of a Down and other bands, but like the truest um, first experience that I had with this kind of subgenre up until they changed sounds was actually Avenged Sevenfold. Um, I was listening to them in my freshman year when City of Evil was fresh, and of course when Waking the Fallen was still uh, relevant. So I have a lot of good memories to this band. I've seen them live at least once. They're incredible. Incredible musicians. They've done very well for themselves, and I respect the shite out of them. So um, I'll get into all the specifics with each album. Um, as we do the ranking. So let's go ahead and get into it. So at the number seven spot, um, and of course at the end of this, I'm gonna also tell you my top 10 songs. Uh, number seven spot, we have their first album, Sounding the Seventh Trumpet. How fitting that that's at the number seven spot. Um, once again, another ranked and reviewed where I put a band's first album at the bottom spot. Look. Sometimes bands put their best foot forward with their first release. Oftentimes, though, their first release is unrefined. Um, it's it's still you know good to listen to, but it's just they're not at their most mature. The band chemistry is not entirely there yet. All the members aren't there um, sometimes, and just the sound hasn't fully been you know fleshed out just yet. Is it worth giving this album a shot if you're an Avenged Sevenfold fan? Yes. But it's just the first album that I would show to an Avenged Sevenfold fan or um, somebody who's never listened to them before. God, no. Um, out, of the, out of the 11 tracks that are rateable, you know, there's an intro and a transition. So I guess there's 13 songs. I'd say three songs on here are worth listening to. You got Turn the Other Way, An Epic of Time Wasted, Streets, which has a really cool punk sound to it that I enjoy. It sounds like it should be on a Tony Hawk soundtrack. Oh, make that four songs. I think the closing track, Shattered by Broken Dreams, is pretty solid. But beyond that, we're not seeing the blistering guitar solos. We're not, there is some pretty solid drumming on this album. And Mike, uh, you know, M. Shadow sounds pretty, you know, pretty good on this album. But it's just, you know, they're just, they're young and immature on this album. So it's it's not their best work. But what I will say that this album does differently than most others that a lot of first albums from bands do is you kind of hear a different unproduced uh, song structure. But what I like about this album is the rhythm guitar sections are a little bit more complex than what you hear in a little bit more overly simplistic uh, rhythm sections in their later work. But beyond that, though, Sounding the Seventh Trumpet is, is just a good album. It's by no means great. It's got a handful of decent tracks on it. But I wouldn't listen to it from front to back again um, unless I was forced to. Uh, the spread from the number seven to the number one spot, by the way, is a 7.6 out of 10, which I'm kind of generous with my ratings. So I still think Sounding the Seventh Trumpet's a good album. Um, seven means good. Eight means great. Nine means excellent. Ten means perfect. Haven't had any mediocre albums or okay albums on this series just yet. Um, so yeah, number seven goes to Sounding the Seventh Trumpet, sitting at a 7.6 out of 10. Number six spot goes to their 
sixth release from 2013, Hail to the King, which is very much a stripped down, simple version of Avenged Sevenfold, but the vocals are excellent. Uh, when the guitar solos do come out, they sound great, but it's just not a complex album. It's overly simplistic. It's not super memorable. And the only songs that really make me happy are the first and last track. Shepherd of Fire is a pretty solid opening track, and Acid Rain, in my opinion, the closing track, is the best song on the album. But, you know, there's a couple tracks on here that kind of really weigh it down. You got Doing Time, which vocally just sounds kind of lazy, and then Planets, I don't know what they were doing with that song. Definitely one of the weaker Avenged Sevenfold songs I've ever heard. Um, outside of sounding the seventh trumpet. But... You know, there's a handful of good songs on here. Again, they were kind of channeling some, like, Metallica Black Album sounds on here with songs like This Means War or Hail to the King, Heretic. Uh, oh, I misspoke. Crimson Day is also a pretty solid track. But, you know, again, Hail to the King, kind of like Sounding the Seventh Trumpet. Not their most memorable album, but they were, I think they wrote this album to kind of be an arena rock band. And these songs would probably crush it live. I've never seen any of these songs live before. They probably sound amazing live, but just as a studio album, it's their sixth best. Barely getting an 8.1 out of 10, meaning it's still great, but from Avenged Sevenfold standards, it's their sixth best album at this time. Um, yeah, I strongly, I strongly encourage listening to Acid Rain. Probably a very underrated song. I, I love that song. Number five. Um, so the number five and four spot are actually a tie, but I'm going to get the slight disadvantage, unfortunately, because I was hoping this album would rank higher, to their most recent album, The Stage. Now, I think The Stage might actually have M. Shadow's best vocals. He sounds incredible on this album. It's just the problem with this album, though, even though it's their longest, it's got the most content on it. It just it suffers from being extremely front loaded. After the song Angels, the quality of this album just kind of drops a little bit. Um, all the best music is at the front of the album. My top songs are God Damn and Creating God. So we're damning him and then we're creating him. <laughs> but the stage is cool. This album has some pretty cool music videos. You know, you got the stage, you got you know all the puppets. You got Goddamn, which has really cool like effects and you know is a fun music video. Um, Paradigm is a solid track. Sunny Disposition's got some cool horn features in there, kind of good, a little bit um, theatrical, I guess, like your self-titled days a little bit, which I'm not usually a big fan of, but if done tastefully, it can add some dynamics to the album. But look. Again, this is kind of Avenged Sevenfold at their most mature. They did a lot of great mixes with like old and new sounds alike on this album. But again, they just kind of dropped the ball, in my opinion, on the second half of the album. You know, you know, Simulation, uh, Fermi Paradox, you know, songs like Roman Sky and Higher are pretty, pretty good. But even the closing track exists, which if you look at it from a perspective of, okay, these guys had John Petrucci from Dream Theater come in here and do some uh, session drumming um, and maybe even tour during the Nightmare Days for a while. Maybe some of the Dream Theater influence rubbed off on them and they wrote a song called Exist. Um, it's a great song in its own respect, but you know, for what I like in Avenged Sevenfold, I don't think that was the best way for them to close the album. A 15-minute epic, I think the album kind of overstayed its welcome, so... That's why it kind of sits comfortably. It's still got a solid rating. It's an 8.5 out of 10, basically. Um, it just didn't hit me as hard as the number four spot, which goes to Nightmare, their 2011 release, their first album without The Rev, um, Jimmy Sullivan, on the drums. This was a very emotional and difficult album for them to put out. Um, this album... Kind of like the stage is a little bit front-loaded, but it's a little bit more consistent throughout. Um, it closes with a much better closing track, um, and there's some really solid gems in the middle. You got Buried Alive. You got Natural Born Killer, which is my favorite song. For some odd reason, Natural Born Killer just reminds me of like 
Waking the Fallen, just that powerful chorus. I love that song. And then, of course, you got So Far Away, which, aside from Seize the Day, is definitely their most powerful acoustic song. Um, So Far Away is a beautiful song. It's a tearjerker, man. It's a song about their drummer that they lost. Like That was one of the most painful losses to the rock and metal community was the drummer of Avenged Sevenfold. That guy was an icon. He was lovable. And he was gone way too soon. So Nightmare really does illustrate a band going through loss, through pain. And like I've said on previous videos, bands that are either in dysfunction or they're in grief or they're in some sort of rehab, rehabilitation, sometimes the best music comes out of that. And even though Nightmare sits at the number four spot, there is some incredible material on here where <clears throat> even though it's not their heaviest album... They still deliver the intensity. You know, Welcome to the Family, again, Buried Alive. Um, trying to think. They, they kind of slow it down a little bit with songs like Victim and Fiction. Uh, the piano work is pretty awesome in the song Fiction. And then, of course, they close with Save Me, which is a much better epic, in my opinion, than a song like Exist. Um, by the way, you can't talk about Exist without mentioning the fact that Neil deGrasse Tyson, uh, his voiceovers in that song. But anyway... So, Nightmare is awesome. I know a lot of people rank that album maybe a little bit higher, but we're about to get into the golden age of Avenged Sevenfold here with their top three albums. So, with the number three and the number two spot, we got ourselves another tie here. Um, but once again, um, I know what to do. With, our, with these top three, we're basically getting into, like I said, the golden age of Avenged Sevenfold. A lot of nostalgia here, a lot of powerful X Factor memories, a lot of positive memories anchored in these albums. When I saw them live, this was the chunk of what they performed. So I believe I saw Avenged Sevenfold during their best years. It was in 2008. And it was when they were touring um, their 2007 release, the number three spot, self-titled. So I'm giving the slight disadvantage to self-titled because of one reason. And that's a little piece of heaven. One song, one song on this album dragged it down to the point where I couldn't put it over the number two spot. Now, this is personal preference. They, went, they did something different there. I know a lot of fans love that song, but personally, I'm not a big th fan of theatrical stuff. I think if it's done tastefully and it's done in some decent spots, I can get down with it. But if the entire song is like that, and, you know, Jimmy Sullivan's performance in that song, because he did vocals on this album, um, weren't as good as they were on other songs like Critical Acclaim or Afterlife. Little Piece of Heaven wasn't a huge fan of his vocals on the song. But um, I still think it's a great song for what it is, but it's just for my personal preference in Avenged Sevenfold... It's not, like, top tier or, you know, whatever. So that's why I gave Self-Titled the slight disadvantage. But beyond that, this is probably their most consistent album. From Critical Acclaim, Almost Easy, Scream, Afterlife, I'm listing off all the songs. Gunslinger, Unbound, Brompton Cocktail, Lost. And then the last two tracks, it kind of just drops off. So the first eight out of ten songs all just tug at my heartstrings, all give me incredibly happy memories of... The summer of 2008, seeing Avenged Sevenfold play with Bullet For My Valentine and Atreyu and Bless the Fall and a handful of other bands, Taste of Chaos 2008, a lot of great high school memories my junior year. This album is incredible. It was like one of the soundtracks to like one of the best summers of my life. Um, but just the very last two um, songs kind of weighed it down a little bit. Um, I think Dear God, which I think might be a cover song. I used to not like this song. I used to never listen to it because I wasn't a country fan. But with a more refined, mature ear these days, I actually find value in the song. I think it's a better song than A Little Piece of Heaven. But the last two songs are my least favorite songs on the album. Um, and beyond that, the best songs on this album are, of course, Afterlife, which is an iconic late 2000s radio metal hit with an excellent chorus. My, my old band and I used to cover this song. And I could get the solo like 70% correct, all the easier parts. 
And then, of course, uh, my other favorite song is Unbound, The Wild Ride. I love that song. I love the ending. I love the guitar work. This album is just extremely catchy. It's not as technical as City of Evil. It's not as, um, you know, aggressive as, like, Waking the Fallen, but just the hooks, the, the, the musicianship, the writing, even with more simplistic rhythm parts, this album still shines quite a bit and easily sits in the Golden Age of Metalcore, uh, Golden Age of Avengers Sevenfold, um, in their top three albums. Um, almost getting a 9 out of 10. I love this album. I still listen to it quite a bit, and I enjoy it. But I give the slight edge to the number two spot, City of Evil. Now, if it's not Nightmare or self-titled, this is what most people deem their best album. And I see why. Um, City of Evil was ahead of its time. For 2005, this is a very groundbreaking record. They brought back some intense metal elements that hadn't been seen in a while, but they added such a modern flair to it, and Mike Shadow's vocal performance at that point, this being their third album, just skyrocketed in quality. He ditched the screaming, unfortunately, but his clean vocals and just his grit in general are just incredible. The dual guitar work of this album is unmatched. This is, in terms of guitar work and in terms of intensity, their their top album. The drumming, the bass work, the fucking bass intro to The Wicked End. Um, every, every person in the band on this album shines. Like, it's, this is, this is a, a masterpiece, this album. It just doesn't get the number one spot for certain reasons, which I'll get into. But, you know, Bat Country... You know, one of the first years of me getting into playing guitar, backcountry, like, invigorated my desire to be a much better lead guitar player. Um, Beast and the Harlot, same thing. Blinded in Chains, a very underrated song that I love very much. But my, my most favorite songs in this album are actually Seize the Day, which is a song that really grew on me my senior year of high school. And I'm talking about good memories here, like good nostalgia X Factor shit here. I talked about that with the self-titled album. But honestly, City of Evil, I've got even more good good shit attached to that album. Not only did I love listening to it my freshman year in high school when it was new, but it came back to me later in high school, my junior and senior year of high school, and songs like Sidewinder, which Sidewinder to me is an extremely underrated seven dust, uh, Avenged Seven full track. Um, definitely the best song on the album, especially with that acoustic outro. Um, the story writing and the song telling and songs like Wicked End or Strength of the World are incredible. Uh, Betrayed, another underrated Avenged Sevenfold song. Um, the only reason why this album probably did not get the top spot is because just because <sighs> kind of like a couple of other albums before it's the closing track and I know a lot of people love these closing tracks that I talk about not liking as much but I don't think um I know a little piece of heaven is not a closing track but it's it's towards the end of the album I think it's an overrated song I think MIA on City of Evil is the weakest track. I know it's a song about the troops. I know um, it's got some heart behind it. And it, it was actually really great when I saw it live. It was very well performed live. But the song itself, to me, doesn't stack up compared to the rest of the album. I still think it's a solid track. But again, I'm being picky and I'm saying compared to the high octane energy and preferences that I have towards the rest of the album, kind of drags it down a little bit. But the rest of City of Evil is iconic. The harmonized guitars and Mike Shadows or M Shadows improved vocals really soar on this album. And again, just the X factor, the nostalgia, that the good memories really weigh this, uh, bring this one up. And then, then again, just seize the day. That guitar solo, the closing, the bridge, that is an incredible Avenged Sevenfold song. And you just can't fuck with it. City of Evil is a breakout album. If you thought the number one album, was a breakout album. City of Evil is what really put them on the map. But let's talk about the number one album, and that's Waking the Fallen. In my opinion, this is easily their best album. Now, I've looked at a lot of other rankings, and I've seen people put this album towards like the middle. But to me, 
this is just their best album. And this might just ultimately come down to preference. Now, is this Avenged Sevenfold at apex musicianship or performance? No. This is not Mike, or M, I, I'm sorry, I keep forgetting if it's Matt or Mike Shadows, so I'm saying M Shadows, because they all have nicknames. You got Sinister Gates, you got Zacky Vengeance, you got The Rev, and then you got Johnny Christ. Um, and who knows, um, you know, I, I forget their new members' names, because, you know, again, Jimmy Sullivan passed away, The Rev. Um, but Waking the Fallen has a very special place in my heart. Um, and also, I tend to lean more towards the heavier music. This is a much more refined, more mature version of Sounding the Seventh Trumpet because this is the last album where uh, the vocalist is screaming. And I think he sounds great. I don't care if he sounds a little raw. I don't, think he, I don't care if he's not one of the best screamers out there. I think he sounds great. Waking the Fallen has songs on here that cannot be touched. This has Avenged Sevenfold's absolute two top tracks, including a rare... 10 out of 10 song. I don't, I'm generous with my ratings, but I don't give nines and tens that easily. But this album has it. Do you know what song it is? It's chapter four. Chapter four, even if it has an overly simplistic guitar riff in the intro, it's sometimes simplicity really pulls you. It really tugs at you in a way. Um, chapter four is absolutely Avenged Sevenfold's best song. I gave that uh, I gave that song a perfect ten. But you know what else is on this album? I won't see you tonight. Part one: the piano work, the clean singing, the guitar work, the solos, the outro, everything. I'm not going to disclose it on this pod uh, on this um, video, but I just had I've had some pretty memorable life events happen to this album. So. Objectively speaking, I think the music and the performance of this album in a lot of ways is the best, but I've also got some very powerful memories, just like with Self-Titled and just like with City of Evil, but the good times that I've had to this album um, can't be matched. But if we're looking at it just objectively, this album has Avenged Sevenfold's best closing track it has and all things will end which is just an epic closing track doesn't overstay its welcome it's catchy it's awesome guitar work solo sinister gates really comes out and shows what he's worth shows what he's gonna fucking show off in future albums but then of course you have the iconic unholy confessions which is just a metalcore classic one of the best live songs that they've ever played. Who cares how simplistic it is? Who cares that it's one of the only Avenged Sevenfold songs that does not feature a guitar solo? It is still one of the absolute best tracks. And for 2003, this album was way ahead of its time, just like City of Evil. And because of what they could prove on this album and because of the incredibly good memories that I have associated with this album, whether it was with friends or otherwise, this album easily sits at the... Number one spot. I give the I give Waking the Fallen a nine out of ten, a nine out of ten, and it's aged beautifully. Um, so let's review real quick. Actually, hold on. Waking the Fallen. There's a couple of songs on here, like Eternal Rest, uh, Desecrate Through Reverence, and um, Second Heartbeat. The, they're all great songs. They're not my favorite of any Sevenfold songs, but. Other songs like I Won't See You Tonight, Part 1 and Part 2, Chapter 4, Unholy Confessions, and All Things Will End. Those are like all their best songs. All those extremely high ratings skyrocket this one at the top. So let's review. From 7 to 1. Sounding the Seventh Trumpet, Hail to the King, The Stage, Nightmare, Self-Titled, City of Evil, and Waking the Fallen, or WTF. <laughs> and their top 10 songs. Unbound the Wild Ride, Natural Born Killer, Unholy Confessions, Backcountry, and All Things Will End, Seize the Day, Sidewinder, Afterlife, I Won't See You Tonight, Part 1, and Chapter 4. Most of my favorite songs from Avenged Sevenfold are from their first three albums, with the exception of Natural Born Killer. Uh, thank you guys for watching or listening to this video. Uh, comment what your favorite albums are, what you, how you would rate these differently, uh, what did you agree with or disagree with. I respond to as many comments as I can. I do a lot of other ranked and reviews for metal, 
and non-metal bands, so be sure to check out that Ranked and Reviewed playlist. And, um, yeah, man, thanks for listening, and uh, Avenged Sevenfold fucking rocks. I can't wait for the new album. Peace.